Welcome back to Getting Past the Premium, everybody. We're here in the new space. New podcast right? room. I know. It's, it is it is more of a room. We're calling it a studio, but, you know, I think Cam would, would say it's not quite there yet. Yeah. But All right. Well, there. we're going to upgrade it from a room to a studio here in a hot minute. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's better. It's looking great, though. I know. It's better than anything we've had so far. For so, sure. I think it's awesome. But uh, We'll have a consistent place to do these things. Really bright lights. You know, yeah. It's great. Thanks, Kim. I can't stare over there. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, so uh, it'll be fun to put out more content here. We're excited to uh, to continue putting stuff out, which is why we built out a space dedicated for that. And you know, it's to talk about things uh, like we want to talk about today, which I love these conversations, which are just around areas that we're trying to solve, right? Mm-hmm. And that we haven't. We we maybe have figured some things out. We also are still trying to uh, figure out some of some of how we can make things work better. Um, and that's that's a fun part of uh, building any business, right? Is the challenge of solving problems and figuring out how we can bring more value to our clients. Yeah. And I think that's going to be a consistent theme for all agencies out there: is how do you continue to bring value to your clients? Because especially as you know, the products get more commoditized, yeah. which seems like that's the way things are going. Uh, we have to be able to show a client that we can bring more value than another agency at the agency level, not the carrier level, right? Yeah, for sure. And specifically because, you know, in other industries, you have multiple variables that you can play with. For example, right, if you're worried about how much value you're bringing to a client, you can adjust the fee yeah. to accommodate Right, but in our space, that's pretty tough to do because the fee set commission. So it focuses, it focuses the attention to value and value only, which you know is really something that I feel is a lot bigger to wrestle with inside of a, of an agency or, or a shop than what we do. Yeah, I totally agree. It, it, it that is a unique aspect obviously of our industry where you know what we get paid is set by the carrier not by us based on what we feel like we're bringing to a client yeah it's positive and a negative right because we don't have to uh do the work of setting our fees based on the value we're bringing it's you know we can rely on the carrier to pay us what they're going to pay us but there's a flip side to that uh, you know if you're transparent with your client about what you're being paid versus the premium they're being charged and how all of that works. Um, you know, it certainly can make for, if you haven't thought through your value prop, it makes for an interesting conversation with the client if they start to say, well, what are you getting paid for kind of thing? Yeah. If, if all it is is access to a carrier market, uh, that becomes very commoditized very quick and they can get that, you know, through many different areas. For sure. Um, good. Yeah, no, it's, it's interesting to think about how, you know, your, your value is going to be contained within the commission that you get from the carrier minus your expenses and profit, right? And it's net like the only other way to scale value within there is to get more efficient, bring new tech yep. or, you know, figure out a way, but you're only dealing with that slice of the pie. Imagine what life would be like if we could break out of that and say, okay, we're going to start charging a separate fee for all of these other things that we're doing outside of your insurance program. Some of them are going to be related, right? Fall under the risk management bucket, but isolate insurance, continue to create that value prop and that solution contained within the commission but be able to break out of that system for everything else that we're doing from a risk management perspective. Like it changes the paradigm in a big way. Yeah, definitely. I mean, there's a lot of, well, that's an interesting thought experiment that I think everybody should go through. But again, if you're bringing value outside of just servicing and selling an insurance product, how can you monetize that value over and beyond the commission. Now, I know certain states have certain laws around this, so you got to make sure you abide by uh, your state's laws. You can't, in, in many states, you can't charge a commission and a fee for insurance-related services, but 
that's not necessarily what we're saying. We're saying if you provide additional value uh, with maybe it's tech you offer to the client or a, a unique process you take them through to better understand their risk profile or, or whatnot, um, you know, those are all things where, where you can act, uh, add them to your current offering or you can charge for them um, in, in a separate engagement with the client. And all those things just, you know, they provide value, they, they put you into a different light with the client, and they provide additional internal resources for you to go, you know, build additional value for the client. Mm-hmm. And all those things are things that we as business owners need to be thinking about. So talk about just what are your thoughts and things that, that are going through your mind at Ella Brock Norris that, you know, where we're trying to work towards some of those things? Well, um, yeah, it's a good question. So particularly from a strategy perspective, we frame it in, um, I guess, the term of strategy. But in essence, it's how a business and an organization is managing risk inside their organization globally, right? So if we look at a business, what risk do they face from you know, nose to tail. And that encompasses a lot. Yeah. And only a a few of those actually can you solve with an insurance product. There's a lot that exists outside of being able to go out and place insurance and de-risk that particular risk. So we've focused, we've been focusing a ton of time on What's our process to evaluate these other risks? And then what can we do to help, um, not solve, but start to mitigate those risks and you know have a plan in place to bring awareness and whatnot so that the business owner can start making a decision about where their risk management dollars go. So you know, from a high level, like that's where we're spending a ton of time. And again, it gets kind of interesting when you think about it more from an agency or company perspective in terms of what you're going to be able to provide for value in the existing commission structure under insurance, yeah. right? And you know, we've identified this as, as a way to unlock what we've been beating our heads against the wall within our existing margin. And you know, we have clients that want to, they want this type of engagement how do we engage with them and make it something that we can go out and execute consistently with and like they're happy with the product at the end of the day. Yeah. And, and what's interesting too about where we're playing around with this, and I think I would encourage everybody to think this way is there are probably many things that you've designed in your engagement with a client that are somewhat unique, different, you, you know, you're because you've tried to differentiate yourself. Uh, this is the process that we go through or we have for a while, our sales process, right? To understand, better understand the client's risk so we can offer them different services and things like that. But what we're realizing is there's a lot of value just in that process. And there probably is in things that you're doing for clients too. And, and so you should consider charging the client for that value. And, and the other beauty to that is the client doesn't have to hire us to replace their current broker, right? They could go through this process, they could pay for it, get a lot of value, and then, you know, learn how we work, learn if we work together uh, well, and see if we would be the right one then to help them implement uh, their strategy around their insurance program or their benefits program or whatever. But they're able to get a lot of value before that we even get to that point. Yeah. And then, you know, we are going to, uh, potentially we'll see where this all goes, but we're going to give them the roadmap and say, you know, here's how we'd go implement uh, your insurance program to achieve your goals. They can go and do that. They can do it on their own. They can try to do it with their broker or they could hire us to go do it. And, you know, there's a lot of, of value and, and a lot of uh, really cool stuff I think you can do to kind of shift that perspective with the client yeah. away from just selling them an insurance product like everybody else does to a true strategic uh, planning model in their business, which is how they do everything else. Yeah. Yeah. And it's interesting. Just, uh, I'm not a psychologist, <laughs> but you know, whiskey, what we've done, that's true. 
What we've done for a long time is said, okay, we're going to provide you all of this value and you know, we're going to do this for the commission that we're getting from the insurance company, right? And without them paying an additional fee, you, you fast forward a year and depending on you know, how well you've executed throughout that year on everything outside of insurance, or how well you've wrapped up in some sort of value report, specifically what you've done for them throughout the year that wouldn't be encompassed in a traditional insurance agency program. Like, you know, you're just an insurance guy. Yep. At the end of that year, we would get calls that would say, you know, hey, I'm ready to chop my insurance. And you're like, well, hold on a second. Like, we've been <laughs> doing all this other stuff. And they're like, well, yeah, but you, you, you handle my insurance, right? And we're right back in the same situation that we were. Same seat, same everything. When they're paying dollars and, you know, it's tagged and earmarked for something completely different, the dynamic shifts dramatically. And again, like, I'm not smart enough to understand why, but it's, you know, at very least a negotiation tactic. And more than that, you know, something that you can hang your hat on, like, look at what we've accomplished. You've spent X amount of money, look at what we've accomplished. And it allows you to manage their insurance program completely different, you know, separate and different. And you'll, you know, that's a great point too. You know what's now important to them, where they're going. You just know so much more about them that you can better and more effectively manage their insurance program, which yep. is ultimately what you want to do. Yep. Um, and yeah, so we'll see where, where we kind of get with that. But, but the underlying concept there that I would encourage everybody is just look at what you're already doing or, you know, consider how you could create that roadmap for a client or that, that unique process that you do or you can take a client through that is valuable and consider charging for it up front. Um, set yourself apart. Again, you can always come back to and say, now, if you want to implement this, you can either go self-implement, I'm going to give you the, the blueprint, the roadmap, or you can hire us, we're going to help you do it. Either way, at that point, the beauty there is insurance company pays us to go do this, whether you're paying us or somebody else. Um, and, you know, whether you charge additional fees in your state or something like that, that's up to you. But um, there's some really cool stuff that, that you can do from that angle. Yeah. At very least, just start to break out what, exists inside your traditional insurance product, right? Product in, in air quotes, because that's not, I'm not talking specifically about an insurance product, but your solution um, from the agency's perspective with insurance, like what that experience looks like. Delineate what you're doing outside of that from that traditional experience. And just start to separate it out and communicate that and that that's what helped us kind of understand like, wow, I actually think there's a lot of value here mm -hmm. and we should be treating this differently. Yeah, totally. And the other piece that, that I think is important to hit on, and, and there's a lot of different tools you can use to help implement a lot of this, but with the advent of recent, you know, uh, AI being built into a lot of tools recently, um, it becomes really cool to try to think about how you could do this more at scale, right? Yeah. And create some really valuable uh, deliverables back to clients uh, that would have just, not that we couldn't do, but would have taken a lot of time to put together, uh, now become very efficient to do with the right tech. And, um, you know, one of those, I, I don't want to make this all about launch, but I think it's a good example of how we're using uh, tech to help us do some of this. Yeah. So talk through how we're kind of implementing or, or utilizing technology to more effectively drive that part of the value chain for our client. Yeah, it's a good question. So, I mean, in general, launch is designed to help facilitate a specific sales process, right? And, um, you know, through that sales process, we've, uh, created categories of, of risk or different buckets of how we look at risk inside an organization. And it, it, that starts to, you know, get to 
the underlying issues inside an organization that set up the conversation we were just having. How do they view what is happening inside their insurance program? Goes through and asks those particular questions. And then it does that in other areas as well. Strategy being another one of those areas. What are they doing strategically from a risk management perspective and how can we help them? Yep. So, you know, it facilitates this conversation that tees up how we're then going to turn back around and go explain to them how we're going to help. So I do think, you know, obviously launch has evolved uh, quite a bit over the last couple years. And so is our sales process trying to figure this out. They've, I think we've brought them back to a pretty beautiful spot right now and how, you know, launch and our sales process can work just uh, in sync to break these conversations out in something that makes sense to the end user that we can turn back around and present on. Yep. I don't know. You tell me your thoughts. Yeah, I agree with all of that. I mean, it, it is, you know, if I talk, think about the, the problems we were trying to solve when we built Launch, I think these exist across many facets of our firms, but, you know, you have to consider when you're going to build out a process or build out a model Ultimately, how can you make it scalable and how can you make it grow with your firm? Now, I don't think it needs to be scalable from day one. Sometimes you have to do, uh, do the work to understand how it can all come together and then you scale it and, and uh, determine that over time. But I think it needs to be a question you're asking. And uh, we had built the sales process, right, with the right questions to ask, the assessments, how we wanted to connect everything. And we knew it worked when we did it, but it was cumbersome to implement first and foremost. And so we were able to, to make that way more efficient on our risk advisors to go and have these discussions uh, with a tool like Launch. So that was number one, I think, is we needed to make it easier for people to go out and mm -hmm. implement this particular solution uh, or process. Uh, but then, yet yeah, to your point, I mean, back to the client, you know, you're asking the right questions, which means you're having the right conversations. Yeah. Uh, you don't have to think about what, you know, find your the paper on the next question or, you know, where's that Excel doc that has the questions I asked last time in it or whatever. You know, it's all just hand fed to you so that you can focus your time on the prospect and getting to know their business and deeply understanding them and building relationships with them mm -hmm. so that you can differentiate yourself. Yeah. Um, and putting that into an end-to-end -end just process in tech makes it super easy to be doing many of these, you know, side by side uh, so that you can have your pipeline full um, and push them through at the right pace. Um, but then, you know, not only being able to do that, but also to your, to, to your other point is getting that clear picture of the client's situation and making yeah. it super simple for them to be able to see what their situation is. Mm -hmm. You know, we, I love how we've built in the scoring mechanism, right? Because it's a super easy way for the client just to see like, am I doing good or am I doing bad? Yeah. Um, you know, obviously you will dive into that further, but they get a score that says, hey, in, in this risk area, you scored a 353 out of 1,000. Like, yeah. And it's, it's yellow, like it's not good. That's clear to them to see that they need to improve in that area. For sure makes it really easy to have that discussion stand out in the marketplace. Yeah, I agree. Um, yeah, this is, I guess, turned into a quick shameless plug on launch. But uh, <laughs> I, I think the key point is, you know, you don't have to build your own tech. There are tons of tools now, especially with, again, AI making these tools a lot more powerful. Yeah. Uh, there's tons of ways that you can find the right tool for your process. Launch isn't going to be the right tool for everybody. It, Obviously, as for us, we built it, but uh, it's an example of when you find the right tech that can fit your process, it can make it scale better, it can make your conversations with clients better, yeah. you know, everything you're trying to do to fit your model and the value delivery mechanism you're using. Yeah, I agree. I'm um, curious your thoughts on this too. So one of the things that gets fun to talk about is, you know, that conversation with the business owner around like, how well do you know them and what they do? Mm -hmm. um, 
we're starting to craft this conversation in what we call like the goals conversation. What does the business owner or owners want to be accomplishing from a risk management standpoint? And beyond, um, you know, where do you want to be at in three to five years, right? I want to understand specifically what risks you're facing as an organization holistically today. And if you, you know, were to partner with us, where would you want to be sitting in five years from now? But like, tactically, what would that look like? What would we be doing, right? We might be, you know, dialing in your key people and defining really what that means. Um, we might have uh, bones of an exit plan together to transition the business from the second and third generation, et cetera. So like, what's your thoughts on how we're able to not look back in a conversation, but start to look forward in a risk management conversation? I feel like that's fairly unique with what we're doing. Yeah, I think, uh you know, the question becomes like, are we assuming we know what the client wants or are we asking them what they want and what yeah. their goals are? Um, and I think too often we assume that we know, we assume they want cheaper premium and that's what's most important. They want um, the most coverage for the least amount of cost. Yep. Which I'm sure is accurate, right? But is that most important to them or is retaining their key people most important to them. Yeah, it's or nuanced is, when you think about if there's $100 to spend on risk management where each one of those $100 is being focused. Yes. And we and at the end of the day it's it's about not making that assumption, it's about having the conversation with the client. Correct. And you know, that's kind of hit us in the face a little bit uh, with some of the conversations we're already having, you know, you get into some of these in-depth discussions with your clients and you realize like we're having a great discussion, but I ultimately don't know where this is coming from with them because I haven't asked them like, where do you want to be? What's going to be going on in your business in the next three to five years, right? Yeah. We are too focused on the short term uh, and assuming again that we want to get them cheaper cost or better coverage or find a gap in their current program or, mm -hmm. or whatnot. And so again, we don't have that, that conversation fully baked yet, but it becomes really cool to think about going in and, and again, this is, I think is valuable to the client because they probably haven't had this, this conversation. No, Most business yeah. owners are not sitting down to say, you know, what do the next three to five years look like and what do I want to accomplish and aligning their risk management program to go do that. Yeah. Well, there's risk in not having that conversation, yeah. which I think it's fun to talk <laughs> about, but, uh, you know, uh, this, like Elliot said, we're, you know, we're starting to kind of grind on this conversation and uh, it's on the heels of, of a couple examples. I'll, I'll share one. Um, we had, this wasn't a client with, with our company, but um, ran across a situation where they had their benefits with a shop and they had their PNC with another shop and, you know, they were kind of spread out doing their own thing, which, in our eyes, puts a lot more risk back on the business owner, mm -hmm. being that quarterback of tying all these things together. And that became evident because the benefits broker went out to the client, advised that they go self-insured. And, you know, described all the benefits of making that big move and over the long term, blah, 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 blah. And the business owner was like, yeah, I mean, this sounds really great. I think this will put our company in a good situation, all that kind of stuff. And um, what but. didn't get connected in the conversation was that the business owner was also working on a plan to get out. And when they were working on a plan to get out, you know, their advisors are like, hey, I mean, this business is most likely going to transact on EBITDA. And they started to go back through the financials and look at what costs had risen and like why they were, you know, taking a hit on EBITDA over prior years. It was because the claims that they were assuming now on their self-insured healthcare plan. And it's like, 
had that conversation happened in one room with all the advisors, it would be a completely different conversation. And how can we help facilitate that so that, you know, at least the business owner could have made a a more educated decision on whether to go self-funded at that particular time or not than, um, you know, otherwise making that short-term decision. Yeah, I think that's a a great example um, of why it's important to have these discussions, important to know where your client's going. Because again, if you're bringing them solutions, you want to be able to help educate them on how it fits into their overall plans, helps them achieve their overall goals and yeah. plans. Yeah. And to your point, I mean, not that that's a bad strategy, right? It just may not be aligned with most effectively allowing that business owner to exit. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. And I mean, you really don't know, but again, you know, when you think about it through the lens of let's educate and let them decide like that, I wish that would have happened with them. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a perfect opportunity to educate and let the client, you know, ultimately decide. But again, it's, it's also important to connect the dots for them. You know, we've had this discussion, Mr. Business Owner, about how you want to get to here. There is a, an option uh, that we can present to you and your benefits that would do X, Y, Z, but here's how that impacts that strategy, right? And again, then yep. they can make the decision, but you're also forcing that connection. So you're forcing the business owner to remember, like you told us this, and if you're going to achieve that goal, like we could do this today, yep. but it may not get you there, yep. right? And that also comes for why I think it's important that we don't just assume the client wants to save money mm-hmm. because maybe there's a short term strategy where we can save some cash, but it doesn't hit the five year strategy Correct. that that client wants to go do with their business. And it's way more valuable to them to spend more money today on whatever it is. Yeah. Cause it's going to get them closer to their five year strategy. Yeah, it's going to put more money in their pocket in four years. Yeah. 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 You know, in general, i I, I feel like we do a pretty good job of, um, I guess, let me phrase it differently. As an industry, I'm not sure that we're having those conversations the way that we should be. Yeah. You know, and sitting down with them and and truly trying to connect these dots with where are they going over the next five years deeply and then aligning their risk management strategy to that. I think there's a lot of value there. Obviously, their insurance program being one of those pieces. I agree 100%. I think... We've just been, as an industry, we've been able to uh, sell a certain way. And I say sell because I think that's how a lot of people uh, treat you know, our industry is we're selling a product mm-hmm. that everybody has to buy. And so you, know, you can be very successful by just getting in front of enough people and sell them enough products, yeah. right? And I, I think it has... Over the years, it hasn't been a necessity to really think differently about how you're offering value and, you know, a lot of these conversations that that we're having. Um, But going back to the start of the conversation, I think that's becoming more and more important, right? Because a lot of everything that we do is becoming commoditized. And eventually tech's going to be able to do a lot of it, whether it's, you know, might just be even selling the insurance policy better than we can. Right, of AI tools that analyze a client's risk and say, "Hey, here's who you need to buy the insurance policy through." The, yeah. AI, the, the tech is a broker, and they can sell it for two percent commission versus eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen that we get. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, again, it's just an interesting thought from the perspective that you know you have um, the the industry as a whole still very transactional and when it's transactional you have you know brokers operating with more of a scarcity mindset and um it's a great way to put it you know we we still battle some of that right where our all the business owners are trained to have this conversation about their insurance you know 60 days out, 90 days out from renewal. And it's mm-hmm. like, well, no, 
we want to have a risk management conversation. And they're like, what the hell are you talking yeah, about? What does that mean? What's that? <laughs> Which is hilarious. Yeah. And so um, they're or not you used say to risk it. management and they just connect it to insurance. 100%. Yeah, yeah. They're like, yep. Okay, great. We'll talk about that 90 days out from renewal. We're like, that's <laughs> not what we're talking about. Right. And so then, but then we're, we're also saying, you know, the owner will say, well, let's, let's, I've got next Tuesday at eight available for you. And we're like, all right, we're coming in. <laughs> and uh, it's still these transactional, this transactional mentality and the scarcity mindset runs incredibly deep. And all of the things that we're talking about today is trying to elevate us out of that to more of a growth mindset. And, you know, how can we build deep value over a long time and uh, execute like that versus in this transactional model? And, you know, I'll take it as extreme as I think this is why some of the agencies are, are selling is because we like it's just it's so difficult to get out of the let's go transact model to long-term, let's provide advice. Selling insurance is part of that advice, you know, long-term. And we're going to create this up to be scalable where we have business owners calling us saying, I want to engage in this risk management conversation. I heard you can help. Yeah. Like, it's just different. Much different mentality. And the, the mentality runs deep with the client as well, right? It's not just uh, the the producers or the risk advisors. Uh, the clients are trained to expect a certain experience. For sure. And that's why they're saying, all right, come in at eight, show me what you got, you know, because yeah. they're used to uh, walking in and being like, all right, we've got this market for you that, you know, very few agencies have, and you yeah. really need to look at it because of these things. And they're saying, oh, yeah. I mean, I'm happy with my current guy, but if he doesn't have access to that carrier, I should look at it. For sure. That's what they're thinking value is in their mind. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I'm, so that begs the question, right? Like, is, is this whole concept and what we're talking about too early to the market? You know? And yeah. what the fun part of this podcast is, I think that, you know, that's a self-fulfilled prophecy to a certain extent. <laughs> like, we the more that we go out push and... The line. Yeah, talk about that. The better, um, the quicker we're going to be able to ease that curve. But um, that's certainly the battle that we face is how we enter into these conversations just because the average consumer out there is not, you know, familiar with a risk management conversation versus an insurance conversation. Very used to an insurance policy conversation. Yeah, no, I think that's spot on, and and we can all do, you know, our part to continue to push that conversation so that the expectation changes at the client level, and that's ultimately where we want to get it. So, um, anything on that front that we haven't hit on, or that you think would be valuable for everybody to be thinking about? I don't think so. I think we nailed all of it, Elliot. We covered all a of lot it. of ground. <laughs> covered a lot of ground. Um, awesome. Well. Thanks for the time, and uh, I think that's a good spot to wrap. We could keep going for quite a while on this topic, but uh, yeah, I think it's good to. Uh, it was fun. Get to next week, yeah. We'd love Absolutely. to hear feedback too on what anybody's thinking. Absolutely, yeah. If, if you think we're crazy or you know whatever, let us hear it. Yeah, we're putting out a lot of this content on social too, so you know connect with us on LinkedIn. Uh, you know, I'm on Instagram at Elliot where I put out a lot of these things, and again, we'd like to. Uh, have conversations about these topics and how we can continue to push this relationship forward with our clients and push our industry forward. So, all right. With that, we'll see everybody next week. See you.